Hey everybody, uh, this is uh, Matt Welch here. Um, I'm going to be giving a demonstration of a four track looper that I built in Max MSP, which is a, a visual programming language uh, that's largely designed for musical applications and um, some visual ones as well. But um, the reason it's called a visual programming language is that unlike um, languages like JavaScript or, or Ruby um, or C++ where there's written code, you're actually um, manipulating um, discrete visual elements um, called objects that essentially can do any number of things. They can serve as functions, they can serve as, uh, as methods, all sorts of different things. Um, so essentially what I'm doing here is I am taking the audio from the master input and I'm storing it in a buffer which will contain that audio sample and then I'm using what's called a groove object um, to loop within that audio and control a few other parameters like the rate at which it's being played and uh, whether it's playing forwards or backwards through that sample. Um, once all that's accomplished I can then apply these filters to achieve uh, additional effects. It's uh, also worth noting that uh, one of the ways that you can make the interface a little more legible, as you can see it's already a little bit crowded here, is to uh, perform what's called encapsulation. So if we were to look at the low pass filter, this is actually an encapsulation of all the objects that uh, make up the low pass filter as I have it here. So if we open that up, you can see all of the, uh, all of the objects that go into making that function. Um, and uh, what that helps you accomplish is it simplifies the uh, overall interface and makes it more legible and uh, a little more uh, immediate in terms of how you can discern its function. Um, I, it, every single one of our low-pass filters, this one, this one, this one, and the one for the fourth track as well, has uh, versions of these objects in it. And you can see that uh, they would uh, make this uh, presentation even uh, even more convoluted than it is as it is now. So um, that's a kind of a key tool towards making uh, making these interfaces more manageable and, and more workable. Um, so without further ado, um, why don't we take a look at it in action. So I'm going to be demonstrating this um, with a handful of samples that I pulled off of YouTube. We've got a, a gamelan orchestra here. We've got some uh, bird calls. We've got a drone from a William Basinski piece. And we've just got some nice rain samples. So I've already recorded those into these four loops right here. Um, so why don't we begin taking a look at uh, how we can change the sounds here. So you can already hear um, this gamelan sample. It sounds a lot like it's from the straight audio. Um, we can low pass it, which essentially begins to remove the highs from the sound. Even now you can hear more and more of the, uh, the higher parts of the sound being removed. It sounds bassier, lower. Um, the high pass filter does the opposite. It will only let um, the highs pass through. As you can hear now, it's starting to get thinner sounding. Um, I can also change the rate that this is being played at. So the slower, the lower the pitch, the faster, the higher the pitch. And I can also reverse it to give it that kind of classic George Martin uh, Beatles sound that you know you've heard on all those records and so many cents. Um, so uh, with that being said, why don't we just uh, go through and uh, see what this guy can do? You can hear we're already getting into some kind of strange avant-garde kind of ambient territory. Um, just throw some rain in there. And I have also mapped all of these parameters to a MIDI controller, so I can control them live as you would, you know, something like a mixer or, um, you know, uh, any other live electronic instrument. And this is where you can get some more fun performance opportunities. Um, so. Generally, what I try to use um, this for is to, um, I can route audio live from pretty much any source that I want, and, um, and in doing so, I can manipulate it in real time. 
in the ways that I just showed you guys um, to achieve different kinds of textures, different effects. It can be really fun in a group setting. Um, often what I do is uh, after I've uh, written out some music and, and have a lot of the instrumentation there, I will uh, take this guy and feed some samples into it and uh, use that as a way of generating sort of novel textures, different atmospheres, and just uh, interesting ways to fill out the mix. Um, so even with just a handful of parameters here, the filters, the reversing, the rate knob, um, you can really sort of um, achieve some novel, novel ideas, novel tones uh, that you maybe wouldn't have through uh, traditional instrumentation. So um, it's definitely become an asset for me in, in music making and just a, a fun thing to play with. Uh, in my, uh, in my uh, free time. But um, anyway, that pretty much shows off all that it can do. Um, thank you for watching, and uh, have a great day.